Telefonica is one of Open RAN's most ardent telco supporters and has been working towards deployments in multiple markets for a number of years already. Well, to find out how O2 Telefonica, the telco's operation in Germany, is progressing, I'm talking today to Malik Rao, the CTIO at O2 Telefonica, which is also known as Telefonica Deutschland. Uh, Malik, uh, great to talk with you today. Thanks very much for joining us on Telecom TV. Um, if we can start with the, the, the bigger picture, uh, can you give us an overview of O2 Telefonica's Open RAN strategy? Yeah, before getting into the Open RAN, uh, Ray, first of all, I would like to give a context of why are we doing it, what are we doing, right? Uh, to just give you a bigger landscape, uh, we've been... Uh, announcing a program called GPS, the Growth, Profitability, and Sustainability across Telefonica globally, launched by uh, Jose Maria. Uh, technology is definitely one of the big enabler for our GPS plan. There are two important building blocks uh, in, the, in the whole technology landscape. Number one is opening up our networks through a well-defined, simple to consume, APIs for the application developer community, right, to enable new business models, new revenue models, and 5G advanced capabilities like slicing, red capital, bring a lot of new use cases. So that's number one. So enabling the whole network uh, uh, ecosystem for application developers. The second one, I would say, is growth, however, grow sustainably. Telecom as an industry, we've been running, building the plan, build, run kind of networks for the last uh, two or three decades. But if you really want to go towards a capex intensity from high teens, the 17, 18% towards a, uh, 11, 12%, that's what we announced as a part of the uh, GPS plan, you have to do things completely differently. You have to disrupt ourselves, first of all, as the service provider and disrupt the technology landscape and technology service providers, as well as technology providers itself. So for us, cloud as a technology, we see it as a disruptor. And first of all, it disrupts us. And if it is disrupting us to deliver a service to us, the customer, we need a disruptors in the market. So for, for us, belief in terms of disaggregation, decomposition to a microservices, is a critical part of uh, uh, say pillar in our entire technology journey. When I'm talking about technology, right from BSS, OSS, networks, and digital enablers and digital platforms. So this is how I see it as a landscape. And then happy to talk a little bit around our initiative in each side of it. Uh, maybe if I have to, one big highlight for me in the last uh, four years, across Telefonica Group in Telefonica, Germany is our whole BSS transformation. We launched about three years back a BSS transformation completely hosted onto a public cloud. No on-premise equipment right from channels to the billing, uh, order management, product catalog, everything. It's a program which we, we call it as radical architecture and IT transformation. We moved close to 145 applications into a public cloud of course, in the multi-cloud environment, uh, no on-premise uh, uh, solutions deployed. With that learning, right, and now we really want to say, if you want to disrupt telecom, the core of telecom, you have to start working at the core. That is basically the access network and the core network. So this is how I believe on the overall uh, say initiative of cloud, what we are doing. Okay. Uh, and so uh, how does then the development of the ran fit into this i mean what what is the o2 telefonica strategy in terms of evolving the ran towards open ran so open ran whether you call it open ran virtual ran cloud ran the idea for us is or the belief in the last three four years we've been trying in different markets right right from the brazil to uk to germany we've been working with entire industry uh, ecosystem right what we learned from there is at least for me, personal belief is unless the big suppliers really adopt the change that is basically disaggregating the hardware and software, you are not making a big difference in a, in a brownfield network. 
you can build a greenfield network with uh, uh, open ran technology uh, maybe last few years uh, you have seen different uh, uh, you know service providers trying this technology but for o2 in germany as well as uh, uh, across telefonica the belief is we need to disaggregate we need to decompose uh, the ran software because if you want to run ai automation right you want to run the workloads in terms of ci cd devops you cannot do a monolithic kind of uh, architecture and that's what we've been trying to do uh, again we tried with all the suppliers in fact we've just started off working with uh, uh, samsung in the last 6 uh, 8 uh, months bringing the whole virtual ran uh, open ran and demonstrate disaggregate the software and hardware because the heartbeat of a hardware is different versus hard uh, software again just to, i want to clarify we don't have any uh, uh, aversion that we should not buy a hardware from a samsung or a ericsson or a nokia kind of uh, companies we don't have a problem in buying the hardware we have a problem in terms of the way the architecture of the ran software is defined so with samsung what we're right now working on uh, disaggregate completely the software and hardware so we've gone live with one site in uh, landsberg again the belief for us is if you want to try open ran or cloud ran technologies in a rural area we are not going to make a dif- big, big difference unless it is working in our core of the uh, cities core of our businesses then only this technology will be successful and that's what we're doing with uh, uh, samsung right now uh, we have of course in the funnel with uh, uh, ericsson right and in a couple of years we should also be able to try it out our intent is definitely disaggregate decompose for enabling automation for enabling application development uh, uh, say deploy new use cases at the enterprise locations for example let's say if i'm building a private 5g network the use case for the enterprise will not necessarily be applied across a macro network and right from access to the core uh, uh, to the transport uh, towards uh, the internet so we need to de- decompose disaggregate at every segment of our technology landscape okay so you you mentioned there the the first uh site going live uh, with Samsung and that was a a milestone you achieved just recently uh what will be the next steps i mean will you gradually start to add more open ran sites uh, around germany will you wait and and gather data and information and experience uh, from this one site what what can we expect in the near future we will scale up i mean from these uh, uh, one site pilot to at least 10 15 sites uh, to begin with next uh, uh, one quarter it's not a one year kind of plan however we would like to see the deployment of uh, uh, open run networks in germany uh, in a in a sizable scale starting into 2025 intention is to go at least 20% of the network where we want to deploy uh, with open run technologies and gradually uh, say uh, test the whole software disaggregation and ability to open up the interfaces for different use cases that's what we're trying right now so the one side will go into seven to 10 sites in next 3 uh, to 4 months time and then and then we will of course do uh, load testing and uh, do how how do you do the life cycle management of a software because we want to really get into a ci cd devops kind of framework in the access network we don't want to get into a uh, a deployment cycle of every quarter every uh, you know six months we want to go uh, in life uh, software deployment kind of capabilities uh, we've already started doing it in the core network uh, recently when I mean, we have ericsson core uh, in our network at this point of time and we do in in service software upgrades uh, we've tested the in service software software upgrades and that's what we want to start doing in the radio network in coming quarters okay so really this is um fitting in then with this broader strategy you talked about about uh, opening things up and having a more software and and cloud uh, approach i mean uh, you know how is this manifesting itself you mentioned there uh, the the 5g core i mean there's been 
uh, more new developments uh, just uh, just right now with uh, with Nokia and AWS, doesn't it? How does this all fit in together? The evolution of the RAN as you evolve the core towards standalone cloud-based core. Absolutely. I mean, in fact, uh, as I just mentioned, we have Ericsson as a complete uh, core right now. However, we said we want to really uh, start working on uh, cloud native uh, solutions hosted on a public cloud. Right. Uh, of course, we have Ericsson uh, core, which is cloud native, however, deployed on premise. But we really want to take a big step in terms of going uh, uh, into public cloud. We've been working with uh, both uh, AWS, Google, Ericsson, Nokia. Uh, for the last uh, roughly about uh, two years. I mean, I spent enormous amount of time in convincing the ecosystem to say, okay, this is the right thing for us to do. It is not just only for Telefonica, it's for the supplier ecosystem, it's for infrastructure providers like AWS or Google or Microsoft. So what we have done today, uh, we've announced today uh, is no more trial. Our intent is to go and do a million customers on a live, right, customers, live network and that's the plan which we have we have tested all of it in next let's say in in, in one to two months time we will ramp up the whole core which we've deployed on aws and nokia uh, with 5g standalone uh, capability to a million customers live in next say two to three months time so what does it why are we doing it right if, if i look back why are we doing it as I mentioned clearly, disaggregation. Disaggregation in managing software and hardware are two different uh, perspectives. It also helps my team and my uh, and my organization, the way we have managed applications in telecom will not be, we will not be able to work in the, uh, in the cloud native, uh, public cloud based deployments. You need to have, I mean, right starting from an observability, Right then, your uh, uh, in-service software upgrades, the way you deploy the software, the way you manage the infrastructure. I mean, this is what we've been doing for the last uh, one to two years' time. Now we're fairly confident now that okay, with a, with a million customers on the platform, we will learn a lot. We will learn a lot in in, uh, in how do we manage as Telefonica, because in the industry. If you have moved to a, to a situation from a service provider perspective, we said we won't have a single neck to choke, right? If any problem is there, I want to go to one, one uh, company or one solution provider. Possibly in the cloud environment, it may not be able, we will not be able to achieve that kind of, uh, uh, say, uh, hands off approach. That's what I call it as. We need to be knowing, we, we cannot outsource responsibility. We cannot outsource accountability. From a customer perspective, we will provide the services despite it's hosted in public cloud or a private cloud with security, with data privacy. So that is the kind of learning curve, curve which we are doing. Uh, my plan towards next year will be at least 20% of my overall traffic on the, on the entire core network should be sitting on this kind of uh, uh, technologies. Again, we don't want to start with, I mean, we don't want to stop only packet core. I mean, if I take the core network as a whole. So for me, core starts at the end of transport aggregation and core ends for me at handovering to internet. So there is about 16 to 17 elements in the core network. So we want to see all these 16, 17 elements to be hosted on a public cloud, hosted on a cloud environment, and we're able to orchestrate the application, orchestrate the infrastructure, and orchestrate the service what we are delivering to the customers. So this is the journey which we have uh, ahead of us. I mean, it's it's pretty exciting, and of course, it's challenging. Okay, yeah, no, absolutely, and, and this is the kind of uh, the vision, the the roadmap that we've been hearing from uh, many in the industry for a few years now. Um, how is all this going to change the way that O2? Telefonica works on on a day to day basis, and, and the skill sets that its staff will need. I mean, how much reskilling have you already had to to do within your teams, and and how is it impacting how how you, the operations team is working on a day to day basis? Absolutely. I mean, in fact, today I'm I must say I'm super happy. When we started off about four years back, we had five cloud certified architects. So we started off a program, first of all, 
reskill, upskill program about three, three and a half years back. So we worked, of course, with all the hyperscalers in terms of cloud certification. Before we started moving the applications into cloud, we said we want to have 100 cloud certified architects. And we took a pretty bold step in terms of saying, you know, I mean, you don't need to be doing every time a business case. I offered to my entire organization, not only technology, to my 7,000 people organization, if anybody wants to learn cloud, if anybody wants to do certification, it's on my cost center, technology cost center. And roughly 18 months into the, uh, into the entire program, we were able to have close to 1,800 people went through the entire program. And today we have about 65 cloud certified architects. And so this is the first investment. We said we want to do over invest on people, culture, right, and trainings. If you don't over invest, there is no point for us to just do a pilots and trial. Glad that we started about three, four years back, uh, this whole program. Uh, today, I don't need to convince my team that cloud is the better thing. I mean, in fact, we have moved, uh, complete charging, right? The entire charging when we're working with matrix and Google cloud. Uh, so all my charging is now sitting on public cloud, uh, with data security, data privacy hosted in Frankfurt. So you are able to make these kind of big, bold decisions only when you have your people, your team, you're able to work in a CI CD. You're able to work with the suppliers in terms of saying you have a uniform pipeline of CI CD. IT doesn't need to have a separate and network doesn't need to have a separate because we have built an organization, which is much more horizontal. I don't have any organization which is centric to domain. We talk about technology, like for example, cloud and data center. So that's a team which enables any applications, both network as well as uh, uh, the IT, uh, say, workloads. If I look back, we have moved these 170 applications into public cloud uh, technology. And the biggest uh, beneficiary of it is uh, my stability and quality. I had only one incident in the last, uh, say, close to 18 months of operation with such a massive uh, workload sitting on the on the cloud, because it forces you to be agile. It forces you to think DevOps. It forces you to really have a CI/CD disciplined pipeline, right? And security patching. You I mean, in in our on-premise uh, world, we really didn't know what kind of security patches we need to put in every component. But once it goes to cloud, you are forced to do it. So discipline brings in. Discipline brings the culture. And culture is really uh, extremely important for us to really uh, manage these kind of uh, critical workloads on the public cloud. Okay, that's uh, really interesting. Uh, and to see how things have evolved in the team and to hear about the appetite within your team as well for this kind of uh, evolution. Uh, and these kind of developments. Uh, so, uh, Malik, uh, great to hear from you today. Thanks very much for the update, not only on what's happening on OpenRAM, but in your broader sort of cloud-oriented, cloud-native strategy as, as well. Really interesting. Thanks very much. So, uh, a really great update there from Malik at O2 Telefonica, and we look forward to hearing more from the broader Telefonica group and from other operators as well in the near future about not only their open RAM plans, but their broader cloud-native, cloud-oriented, disaggregated network plans. Thanks for watching.